Well, we don't, and the IRS doesn't like us talking about uh, avoiding, so we're, we're going to talk about tax deferred exchanges. You're deferring the taxes due. So when you're disposing of a piece of property that's been held for investment, if you've got something else you'd like to buy that's of like kind, and you would like to defer all your tax, we simply structure a 1031 exchange, and that's going to allow the person, if they meet all the criteria, to defer all capital gains tax in that transaction. And as I said, some people reference this as a tax-free exchange. It's not. It's tax-deferred. At some point, you're going to realize the gain and, the, and, and pay the tax on that deferral. Great question, and, and it's one I'll say the sooner the better, because what happens, even, even though this code's been around since the 20s, we still have people contact us after a transaction's closed. Most uh, states' purchase sale agreements actually include some type of uh, 1031 cooperation provision, but the problem is that it, it, it's sort of a boilerplate provision. It's not something where you're checking the box that you're going to do it or not do it. So. Unless escrow is, is put on notice, unless people are aware that you're going to make this exchange happen, uh, nobody's going to get it done for you. So it's really important from the deal's inception. Uh, a lot of times people ask, hey, as you did, when would I like to know about it? It's when you're listing the property, you're first making that decision, understand what your tax consequence is going to be on a disposition decide whether you want to pay that tax. And then, you know, the biggest trap with any exchange is time. So you want to be looking for that replacement from the first time you, you decide to sell. So have an idea, minimize the impact of the tax, you know, those timelines that 1031 deals with.